Hello, I'm Mary Key, and welcome to our Right Focus workshop series. I'm the co-author of CEO Road Rules, Right Focus, Right People, Right Execution. And the purpose of this program is to give you more insights into the success habits of some of the best leaders and organizations in the world. Over the past 18 years, I've had the opportunity to work with some great people and organizations, and some that were less than the best. Regardless of the industry or size of the organization, one of the key factors that separates the best from the rest is their ability to learn from experience, their own and the experience of others. In our book, CEO Road Rules, Right Focus, Right People, Right Execution, we interviewed over 50 successful executives about their lessons learned at work and in life. In CEO Road Rules, the leaders we talk with offered insights and strategies that can take you on a path that is less difficult and more fulfilling than it might be without their experiences. The purpose for this program is to take you beyond the book and guide you on a journey to successfully applying right focus to your work and your life. The same journey I have personally facilitated with many of our coaching and consulting clients. You'll have the opportunity to apply the same processes and tools which we've used to help hundreds of leaders experience personal and organizational transformation. Right Focus transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. Right Focus is about getting clarity on your direction for yourself personally, your team, or your organization. I'd like to tell you more about what I mean by right focus. So on our graphic here, you'll see there are four elements that are, will be coming up. The first is the importance of defining your mission. Mission answers the question, why am I here? The second part of right focus is establishing your vision. Where do I see myself going? Or my team or organization? The third part of right focus is clarifying your values, what you stand for. And lastly, the fourth part of right focus is identifying your core focus, what you can be best in your world at. The elements of right focus are very much like this bonsai tree. If we could imagine seeing the root system through this ceramic, the root system of the bonsai represents your mission. Your mission gives you your lifeblood. It is all about who you are. The greenery on this bonsai represents your vision. It's where you see yourselves going. So as the bonsai blossoms and grows toward its full potential, it's moving toward its vision, so to speak. The trunk of the bonsai represents your values, what you stand for, those things that you won't compromise. And lastly, one of the things that makes a bonsai so unique is that they're grown with a certain slant. Now, this one isn't slanted as much as some are, but it has a little slant, and the slant really represents your core focus. It's the importance of leaning into your strengths, really going face forward with your strengths that makes that unique shape that's you. So the mission, the vision, the values, and the core focus are all part of Right Focus and what we're going to be talking about throughout this series. Right Focus will help you be a more effective leader in all areas of your life. When applied to teams or organizations, Right Focus gets everybody on the same page, rowing in the same direction, so to speak. Taking the time to craft an inspirational and accurate mission, vision, values, and core focus is your chance to create a powerful and significant roadmap for yourself and for others. Successful people are self-aware. That's why we'll start with developing your personal mission first, and then we'll apply those principles to your team or organization. We'll do the same with other parts of Right Focus, defining your personal vision first and then moving to your team or organizations, your personal values first, and then we'll move to your team or organizations, and lastly, your Right Focus followed by defining it for your team or organization. By participating in this Right Focus program, you'll accomplish five objectives. First, you're going to improve your self-knowledge and be more in sync with yourself and others. Secondly, you, have a, you will have a clear sense of your purpose 
and what your mission is. Third, you'll be setting an overriding goal or vision that you can achieve. Fourth, you'll develop a better understanding of your values and how you're applying them. And lastly, you'll establish your core focus and learn to build on your strengths. Let's start now with your personal mission. Your mission is your higher calling. It's the motivating force that underlies everything you do. A mission is a brief statement of your personal purpose. It's a description of what inspires you, what motivates you at the deepest levels. Your mission statement answers questions like, why am I here? What is it that makes me feel alive? And what is the essence of my passion and motivation? Having a clearly stated mission acts as a compass to help you focus your energy and stay on a path that will lead you to success and happiness. Let me give you a few examples of personal mission statements. I worked with a human resources manager who was not really comfortable with where his career was going. And as we began to develop his mission statement, he realized that his personal mission was about making people laugh and having fun. That former human resources director is now in entertainment. Another executive who I've worked with ran a family-owned business, which he led very much in alignment with his mission of serving others and living his spiritual beliefs every day. This person actually ties 10% of the company's profits. And lastly, I work with a young decorator who identified her mission as creating beautiful environments for herself and others to blossom in. The best and most inspiring mission statements are broad, they're authentic, and they capture the essence of what drives you. They're about your contribution to the world. Your mission statement should include a strong action verb, such as build, versus trying. It serves as a container of sorts, much like the bonsai container, for what sparks you in life. Here are some characteristics of good mission statements, and let's go to our graphic. First, your mission statement needs to be clear and brief enough so that it's easily understood and communicated. Second, it needs to be inspiring and broad enough to encompass your innate talents and abilities. Third, it's timeless enough to be accurate throughout your lifetime. And I know that sounds like a long time, but it should apply. Now let's go over a few exercises designed to help you discover your personal mission. Here, you might want to go to your Right Focus workbook if you're not already using it. If you don't have it with you, just take out a blank sheet of paper or feel free to start a computer journal in your computers where you're actually working on the exercise. We'd like you to draw a life timeline, starting with birth and continuing to death. Note that along this line, you want to make a line where you have had different major events occurring in your life. So think about these events and also think about maybe the different stages of your life. So on this next graphic, we'll see our timeline again. And let me talk about a few of the stages. Birth until 10 years old. What was significant happening for you then? Let's take a look at preteen and teen years, young adult, adult, midlife, and your wise or elder years. Yep. As you look at your life timeline, I would like you to ask yourself, what were some of the major interest, peak experiences, projects, or activities that sparked passion in your soul? Take your time and have fun with this. If you have trouble recalling, ask a family member or friend to help you recall when you seemed most passionate or alive about something. You may want to stop this DVD here so that you can work on expanding your timeline. 